Joining us now is OG Ojinika Ope. You did it again. <laughs> His story is trending around the world. Good Hello, morning, OG. Dr. Abati. I hope you're brightening our audience right now. They <laughs> love it when you do that. How are you? I'm good. I actually good. love your good tie. Good, uh, good morning, Tunji. No, you complained the other day. We... So I have to <laughs> You, you know, look you great. Are the German, my stylist. Yes, yes, that's me. Yeah, yeah my stylist. Dress like this. Wear this. Yeah, but you need to um, taper down on your black jacket. Okay. Can I she tell doesn't them? like. Yeah. Uh, she likes the gray. I love Remember, the gray and yeah, the navy gray. blue. Thank you. From journalism to fashion, <laughs> the two of you. you are we trying. love it. Happy Friday. Good morning, Happy Tundu. Happy Friday, OG. I love your pepper. Then move <laughs> again. <laughs> Good morning, Rafai. How are you? Very well. So I now see who's been picking those good ties for Dr. Abati. Wow. <laughs> so <nice>. Me. <laughs> I see. Okay. How are you today? Very well, thank you. I'm doing all right. How are you too? Good, thanks. Yeah. Well, good morning to you viewers. We begin what's trending in Ghana, where tributes have been pouring in for the late Jerry Rawlins, who died at the age of 73 from an undisclosed illness. He was best known as the country's revolutionary leader. The news broke on Thursday morning after the president of Ghana, Nana Akufuo Addo, confirmed his passing. Jerry Rawlins, a former president of Ghana, came into power in 1979 after leading his first coup. He then transitioned the country to a stable democracy. He was famous for spearheading military juntas and killing eight military officers, including three former corrupt heads of state, in a beat to eradicate corruption in the country. Rawlins was born in 1947 to a Scottish father and a Ghanaian mother who recently passed in September at the age of 101. He is survived by his wife and three daughters. While leaders from across the world have sent condolence messages well, before we take some tributes, let's take a look at this short clip from an interview the Ghanaian leader granted Diane Sword. <laughs> Africa finds herself in a, in a catch-22 situation, you see. She better watch what she says here and there, or else you don't get that aid or that assistance, etc., etc. Mm. <laughs> what kind of blackmail is this? And it's, it's a painful thing for me, sitting here, to have to be making such admissions. But these are some of the truths, the hard facts, my dear. Some of the students we talked to said, he's a soft dictator. A dictator, but a soft dictator. But will people have a right to vote you out? And the party out? I'm saying that we can vote people in and out. Personalities, OK? But my dear. What we need to do in this country is to establish a situation where even if it was the devil who should come and sit on top of us in Ghana, by virtue of certain procedures, certain practices, the devil cannot get away with doing whatever he wants. He would necessarily have to do what the people expect of him. A revolutionary leader. I mean, he ruled Ghana for 20 years. Well, many Nigerians have admired what he stood for, you know, for the obvious reasons. You know, a lot of people are saying, you know, the uh, Nigerian corrupt leaders need the Jerry Rawlins treatments because, you know, of what he did. Well, I am not one who would stand for killings or a coup in any shape or form, but he worked for his country. And, you know, a lot of people uh, think of him as a hero. I'll take some tweets before we discuss. We'll take a tweet from Kenyan lawyer, Patrick Lumumba, who wrote, I am sad to learn of the demise of President Jerry Rawlins, a good friend and a great man. Let us honor him by emulating his courage and candor. JJ, old soldiers never die. 
For another tweet from Nigeria's former vice president, Atiku Abubakar reads, Jerry Rollins was an African giant. His tenure as leader of Ghana remains emblematic with the restoration of that country. Even after office, he stood tall for African unity and renaissance. He represented a generation of leaders who gave their all for the rebirth of his country and Africa at large. I pray for a pleasant repose of his soul and console with the people of Ghana, his contemporaries and current leaders in Africa on the loss of a worthy patriot, Tundun. Well, I'm going to leave Dr. Abati <laughs> to it because he's been delivering these flowery hagiographies <laughs> all morning but and I, I rather take. enjoyed it. I want your take on it. All it's I will say important. is that I would never um, sanction the use of violence. Which I just said, That yes. whole house cleaning euphemism is kind of offensive to me. We don't call the death, the violent death of over 300 people house cleaning. But I will say he was a remarkable man, yeah. one of the most recognizable Africans. He needed no introduction. I'll leave it at that. Take it away, <laughs> Dr. <Sure. Hussey. laughs> well, I've been accused of uh, a geography. <laughs> but I, will, I will just try to uh, further uh, make some comments. Sure. First, you recall that in 1979, when uh, John Jerry Rollins uh, staged the coup, his intention was not to uh, take over power. It was to, uh, you know, uh, clean the organs table, as they say. And Hilal Iman was installed as the uh, uh, president of Ghana. He was responding against what he saw to have been decades of corruption, collapse, retrogression in Ghanaian politics. So he intervened as a, you know, a patriot. But he ended up in jail. And junior soldiers, uh, particularly his colleagues in the Squadron 4 mm -hmm. of the Ghanaian Air Force, they broke him out. freed him and brought him out. <laughs> Yes. Two years later, <laughs> when he still thought that Ghana was not moving forward, in 1981, we had the uh, revolution, the June 4 uh, revolution. That was when he now took over power, he and his colleagues. And then the dramatic incident that is often referred to is what you call the Rollins treatment, yes. whereby uh, Akufo, uh, Achampong, and uh, six others, you know, were executed, Afrifa, were executed to show that these are the people who are the problem with uh, Ghana. Now, he took over power and became president. But don't forget that, yes, he was accused of despotism, of violence, of murdering people. But this was also the same man that restored democracy in Ghana. Yes, he, he did. He set up the National Democratic uh, Commission. He converted to a democratic leader. In, uh, he also established the National Democratic Congress, which is the party on which uh, John Mahama has been president, mm. and is also seeking to be president again uh, in the elections. If we bring it up to date, we may have a situation whereby part of the legacy of uh, John Mahama will be the people of Ghana showing victory, uh, showing gratitude, and voting for him in the December election. I think they And might. bringing back John Mahama, yeah. you know, uh, for a second term as uh, president of, uh, of Ghana. I made the point earlier on that, look, he was a very good friend of Nigeria. See, if you check his uh, Twitter account, this NSAS uh, yes, he protest, did. he tweeted he did. supporting the NSAS protesters in Nigeria and saying that, look, the Nigerian government should take the protesters seriously. But the one we tend to remember was his support for uh, uh, Sani Abacha, General yes. Sani Abacha. And people say, oh, Abacha because, was good to him. because Abacha gave Ghana yeah. uh, $2 million. But it's not only Ghana that Nigeria gives money to. We have a department in the Ministry of uh, External Affairs that supports African states. Nigeria gives vehicles. Nigeria pays salaries. But it's just that these details, uh, are, you know, are some of the most guarded secrets uh, in the Nigerian state. But I cannot give you more details. No, but I, been, I, I, love it. I love it. I love it when you I, give I, us. I, I, I love it when you give us a peek behind the veil. No, 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 I love I, it. Having worked at a time for the Nigerian state, there are things I cannot say right. on television. We accept that. So, it's not as if he was being grateful. It was a question of Nigeria playing its role within West Africa to ensure stability and to provide uh, support. His death is a major loss uh, for Ghana. It's a major loss uh, for West Africa and for Africa for because Africa he was a man of courage, yeah. a man of valor, a man of uh, you know, uh, you know, great uh, human kindness. 
and a man who enjoys life. I think he, I've seen him before. I think he's very handsome too. He and, was very uh, you know, handsome. Rufai. <laughs> he's one of us. No, 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 no. This no, 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 no. man, but I'm going to be very contrarian <laughs> no, 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 no. in my Go views. I'm going to be very Rufai. contrarian. Yes. I don't believe that uh, Jerry Rawlings just wanted to fix Ghana. That's why he came in. He always nursed the ambition of power. In fact, research his mother. Victoria Atwegbe used to be a baker in the state house. So at an early age, he had access to the state house. He knew what power was all about. Uh, secondly, yes, put Ghana on the path of greatness, free market reforms. At first, he was a Marxist. It was when he saw that was not working, he put Ghana back on the path. And I would have loved a case, if he loved Nigeria so much, I would have loved a case that uh, Jerry Rawlings spoke up for the Nigerian traders that have been treated in this very inhumane way in Ghana. Because most of those traders now are thinking of coming back to Nigeria. And that is very, very sad. And even more sad now for me, knowing the fact that Nigeria did all of this for Ghana in the private. And our traders are being treated that way, despite the fact that the president, I mean, the speaker of the House of Representatives went there to make peace and nothing is still happening, and those traders will lose their means of livelihood. Some of them are married to Ghanaians already. They, they identify themselves as Ghanaians. They will have to be put back to our home. So for me, and concerning the conversation of uh, people voting for Mahama, I don't believe that will happen. Why? Nana Akufuado was greatly supported by Jerry Rollins. A lot of Ghanaians know that Jerry Rollins supported Nana Akufuado. In fact, he didn't supports uh, Mahama that much, and that led to the breakout. So uh, for me, he's a very divided figure. Well, the point Some the things I'll never stand the, for, the point number, here, number the point one. Here, the point here is that, you know, how Nigerians are treated. It has nothing to do with uh, Jerry Rollins. Jerry Rollins, uh, in his lifetime, was not in a position to dictate to Nana Akufado. If you must hold anybody responsible for trade issues between Nigeria and Ghana, you know, the person to be held responsible the is the incumbent uh, president. Right. And then, of course, there, there may be personal issues between uh, Rollins and uh, John Mahama. But it is not true that he's publicly opposed to him. That's not true. Okay. Uh, so well, just making the point, I'm making it clearly. In fact, I've even forgotten what I wanted to say. You so said that some just, things you would never stand for. Some I remember things I'll, what Some you things I'll never stand for. Yes, like I said, Tundu. The killing of people, I felt he could have done it better. I felt those people could still have been alive and you will still, you know, fight corruption the way it should be fought. And uh, I don't believe this Mr. Clean uh, idea of uh, Jerry Rollins, that he was all very clean. You know, there were cases, too, of corruption, too, reported in his government, too, at that point in no, time. No, nobody has said that. And then, all in right. fact, he pointed out that as president, he never had a foreign account because he doesn't believe in the idea of Only money. afterwards, yes. Now, when he became a consultant to Kofi Annan right. as UN Secretary General, he was then, you know, right. compelled well, to compelled open an to. account, that was what he said. a foreign account. But later, that account was suspended when the uh, consultancy ended. So in terms of uh, his integrity, I don't think that any average Nigerian would say uh, that he was... Uh, uh, with uh, any kind of blemish. But let's move on to the next But to eat their own opinions, I'm sure. All right, we'll take another story. In Edo State, Nigeria, where Governor Godwin Obaseki and his deputy, Philip Shaibu, on Thursday, affirmed their commitment to the continued development of the state while being sworn in for a second term. Well, during the inauguration ceremony, an aide de camp to Godwin Obaseki collapsed while the governor was delivering his speech. Let's take a look. I especially thank my party, the People's Democratic Party, PDP. Because we will forever be grateful to you for covering us with the umbrella when we were abandoned in a political wilderness. I want to single out for special appreciation all of those in the diaspora, both in Nigeria and overseas, your support will never be in vain. 
Well, thank God this policeman is uh, fine and, you know, he's recuperating, um, according to Obasaki's spokesperson. But it just goes to show, I mean, what is the training here? What could have happened to this gentleman and why did he faint? Apparently, he was not the only one who passed out during the inauguration ceremony. There was another lady as well who passed out. I don't think it's about the training. I think it was just extremely hot. Really? And I want to say yes. And I do that want to say... a very say... senior person. But if you're hot, you're hot, yeah. you're human. If you're hot and you're dehydrated, you're uh. human. I just want to really make the point that I got a message from somebody saying that it was because he was wearing a mask. Let us not go there. Did you? We can see <laughs> in can that see video, clearly. his mask was under his nose, actually. So his breathing was not obstructed in any way. I have somebody who likes to argue that mask wearing, you know, um, sort of I've stops oxygen going to your brain and all kinds of nonsense. That's not what happened here. I imagine it was a case of dehydration and heat, just discomfort, which is probably why he's okay now, I'm sure. It's very uh, um, shocking, really. Well, let me is put it? it like Yes, this. I think so. Uh, it's going to happen. You'll recall, sorry, Dr. I mean, Abati, you'll recall when, I think Boris Johnson was making an announcement, and for the optics, he had like this battalion, this phalanx of police officers behind him, and one of them passed out because they were standing up for a really long time in the heat. They're human. Okay, if you yeah, say so. I take that you. point uh, about being human. There is a department of the uh, police where officers are trained specially for VIP protection. Exactly, Dr. Abati. It's a special department. They, and, are, they are trained. Yes. So those people you see as ADC and all of that, they go through their own protocols. Yes. But the point that this proves is that they are also human beings. Of course. They can there pass There could be out. exhaustion. Yes. Uh, and I also know that in some of the security arms, uh, if you fall down while on... Uh, duty, security guard duty, or you are on a parade, you could be sanctioned. <laughs> because it will be I know, same. because I'm a daughter of a policeman. So daughter is, of a yes, policeman. That when, is why I'm saying When this. I called you Barras <laughs> yeah, <but> What? <laughs> when, I, when I called you Barras No, I am day, a daughter call, of a policeman. Okay, okay. We'll That's what you. I am. <laughs> so it's, it's part of their training. But yes. the thing is that everybody is a human being. Yes. Whether you are Poor guy. a VIP protection officer or you are just on regular duty. So that's something really unusual for security Completely people, either the unusual. police or the army. However, my own concern is about the reaction of the governor. Oh, if really? I was governor, Godwin Obaseki, at the point at which I saw my ADC slumping, <laughs> I will pause. I don't know whether this is the full uh, video. I don't think, I don't think he saw it because it appears that he's not looking no, he at that. No, he, he, he turned back. around. Yes. Oh, then he, he saw did it. Yeah, turn there was around. a time yes. he, he turned around. Well, There's look no at way that. He could claim that he didn't know what was going on. You know, someone like me, I would have stopped. My you know, speech Make sure that the person is attended you to. You definitely would you stop. You know, pay attention to him. But, you know, to see the governor just carrying on. I see nothing as He carried happened. on. Yeah, yeah so it's right there. That's the no, but I didn't. No, he didn't. Well, we'll he have didn't another float. Can, if you can play that. Yeah, please play that. No, but all that commotion behind him, there's no way he will not be aware of it. Exactly. Okay. But so, he might not know somebody. So I, I find it quite shocking. Look, that he you knows will see that he'll turn around and, and then he didn't watch. do anything. Then the third point yes. that needs to be made. Why is it that when a governor or the president or the vice president is speaking, you must have one marionette standing behind them? under a democratic dispensation. We don't see that when uh, Donald Trump, the uh, most powerful president in the world is speaking, or when uh, Boris Johnson uh, is addressing uh, the press. But here in Nigeria, we have this uh, you know, colonial uh, military heritage of somebody always standing behind the man of, of power. And I think it's something that we need to address. It should be possible for a governor to be able to stand alone and make his uh, really? presentation. Really? I like that. Yes, if, yeah, he, true. okay. if he's truly a popular governor, he's a popular president, in any case, they, you can provide security in other ways. Yeah. You, you don't have to make it so visible. Yeah. When the American president speaks, there's security. Mm -hmm. Then you will not have one uh, robot right standing behind, behind him. Yes, and you never know how long he'd been standing for. He's yeah. a human being, no matter what he's trained to do. But you haven't showed the video where he turns around. If my producer would pull it up somewhere. Uh, yeah, there was a point, what the video that I saw, I saw him turn around. I, I mean, Shocking. I, I mean, for me, I, 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 I really feel for the ADC, and I hope he's all right. And yes, I hope he is. He's, I hope he's well. Yes, he's because fine. Because it's, it's a very uneasy job, very, very uneasy job, you know, uh, being an ADC, just standing there, ensuring the security of the life of that person. It's an uneasy job, and I hope he's well. 
And concerning the point of why should somebody be standing at the back, yes, it doesn't show security as far as I'm even concerned, really. It doesn't show that you are securing the person. And I think the video that came to my mind when I saw all of this and making a point that there's no reason somebody should stand at the back was a video of when President Bush was giving a speech in Iraq and somebody threw a shoe at him and he docked it himself. I remember and, that. And that video speaks <laughs> volumes. Although it was apprehended by Secret Service and the likes, but it just shows you that you don't really need anybody. The Secret Service or the security personnel around there is enough. But I just hope that person is fine. He's not exhausted, yes, he's but fine. he could have lost his life. He could, he slumped. He could have died. Very, very um, worrying story. We'll, um, we'll take another story. Well, this time in the United States. Doug Emhoff, the 56-year-old husband of Vice President-elect Kamala Harris, announced on Tuesday that he will leave his private law practice by Inauguration Day to focus on his role at the White House. Emhoff, who had said he had no interest in joining a kitchen cabinet of advisors if his wife won the election, is now working with the transition team of Joe Biden to determine the role he would take on. His position in the White House is historical, as Kamala Harris will be the first female vice president of America. Tindu, I know you've been dying to comment on this story. It is such, uh, you know, a symbolic thing for a man of power like that to step down his position. I mean, we've been waiting for this type of role change in the White House. I think it's amazing. Yes. I can hear you tittering already, Dr. Amati. <laughs> I heard that. It's really distracting, Dr. Amati. Would you do it? I want to know. Because Dr. Amati is actually highly evolved. I don't want to be telling tales out of school. But Mrs. Amati is a career woman. Yes. You, are, you are encourage women to you know, achieve their highest potential. And your daughters, too, you're highly evolved. Yes. But I love this story. Because because yes. um, Doug worked at DLA Piper, not Correct. just any law firm. That's one of the top grossing law Correct. firms in the world. I think it's number two or number three. My cousin works there. Yay. So it's not, yes. he was, he's a highly successful lawyer. So for him to step down to be supportive of his wife is amazing. It's what is always expected of women mm -hmm. without a single thought. And it's good that a man is showing the way, showing the example. And you're right. I love this story. It's giving me I all, know. The, all the feels. <laughs> and I you know that our former story. president of um, Obasanjo had said that she may have a Nigerian DNA only because, you know, Barack Obama is from Kenya. But I just love the fact that she is there and her husband is supporting her the yes. way that he's Everybody doing. deserves the support. Yeah. I think Doug, uh, Douglas uh, Hemhoff is a hero of all supporting yeah. husbands all over the world. Yes. And I think that he has done very well for himself. He's uh, also making history. The first uh, Sec the second, he's the second husband, husband in the second White House in, White in House. American in, yes. uh, history. And uh, Kamala Harris herself, you know, deserves the support. I've seen part of the narrative. People saying, oh, there's no way she could have made it to the top if she didn't have a very supportive husband like That's Hemos, true. Yeah. Who, in his own case, I mean, he's an accomplished lawyer and professional in his own right and has been very supportive of this brilliant woman uh, who is breaking ceilings and shattering glasses and has uh, you know, emerged as a historic figure in American history. Um, well, I think uh, on a lighter note, I would also like to um, use a Nigerian expression. You know, in Nigeria, people talk about a man who possesses his possession. <laughs> you know the meaning of that. Because some of the narrative around uh, Kamala Harris has been uh, people saying, ah, she's so beautiful, ah, she's wearing nice sneakers, she's, uh, you know, people like Rufai. <laughs> so, Rufai, are you listening? Saying they are in love with her. <laughs> so the man has to stand firm. Oh, you think this is close marking? <laughs> All right. Rufai, please defend yourself. Rufai, defend yourself. Defend yourself, I should give the one staying by Kamala now. <laughs> I should give the one. It's simple like you, Rufai. I Go on. The one, but, I, but I'm happy uh, that for the first time in a long time, we actually have a woman, you know, in the White House in the role of a vice president. And uh, are we going to call Doug now second husband? I, I'm really happy. And I think he's going to do well, you know, with giving our counsel and what is needed to be able to, to unite America, because America needs unity. And please, let's not forget, Donald Trump has not considered yet the transition process is still very hectic. So I, think, I think they should sort out well, that Well, I think at the end of the day, it will be resolved. But we can say that in the presidential position, we're getting two for the price of one. Because Joe Biden is also standing 
very much by her husband, and she says she will be the first first lady of America who will still continue to work because you it know has she's involved never in an education uh, yes. initiative, and she will continue to work as an educationist. She, in particular, has a PhD in education yes. uh, from the University of Delaware. Then you also have on the VP side getting two again for the price of one. I think Americans are lucky, and we are all very optimistic. Uh, that uh, the change that Americans have voted for uh, would uh, move the country forward and make America great again. Can we just claim something in the White House now? We know that a Nigerian might be visiting all the time because <laughs> Kamala's niece is married to an anyway, evil man. So hopefully, you know, you can much, claim uh, the White Nicholas. House. We thank always represent. Yes. Nicholas. Thank you very much. Well, thank you, you Dr. Amati. Have a great weekend. Yeah. <laughs> I can see how excited you are. <laughs>